I'd like to use this stock price simulator to illustrate the look back options. Look back options are an interesting example of what are called path dependent options. And in this case, that means that the frequency of observation actually impacts the value of the option. By the end of this video, I hope you'll understand why. For these look back options, there are two types, floating look back options and fixed look back options. In order to illustrate these look back options, I've created a stock price simulator for a one year period. It's dynamic and you can download the spreadsheet if you like. That means I can keep rerunning it and get a separate trial each time. The key assumption I have in for my trial is that the volatility is 40% per annum. So I have it set pretty high in order to give this path some real shape. And I'll, so I'll settle on this trial and consider the floating look back options. In each case, I'm going to start the stock price at the beginning of the year is $50. And you'll notice my X axis is 25 steps. This is for a one year floating look back option. So if we have 250 trading days, that means each step is 10 days, 250 divided by 25 is 10. That's each of these dots. And so we're observing the stock price every 10 days during the year. It'll always start at 50. And in this particular trial, the final happens to be a, a $51.69. So let's compare first to the vanilla or standard call option. And I'm going to assume that the it's an at the money call option, meaning at purchase here at time zero, the strike price will equal the stock price will equal $50. So for a standard or vanilla call option, as you probably know, that payoff here at the end of the year, if it's a European one-year option, is going to be the maximum of zero and the final stock price minus the strike price or what we could call an exercise price. I like, I denote it here by K, oftentimes it's denoted X, right? So that's the payoff is the intrinsic value here at expiration of what we call a vanilla or standard call option. In this case, you'll notice the final was 51. The final price is 51.69 for a strike price $50. This trial happens to, this option happens to expire in the money where the payoff would be $1.69, right? 51.69 minus the strike of 50 equals $1.69. Now, what about instead the floating look back call? Well, the difference with the floating look back call is that if we look at here, the stock, the stock price minus strike price, the difference is that we use the final stock price, but instead of subtracting the fixed strike price, we don't have a fixed strike price. We look back, hence the name, we look back and find the minimum during the life of the option. So this option is what we call path dependent. So I've, I've pulled those numbers out dynamically as well. And you can, you'll notice that the minimum happens to be $44.50. But that's the look back, right? We go back and we find the most favorable, in this case of the call, price to use. So that price effectively substitutes in for the strike price. And in this case, right, we have a final of 51.69 minus 44.50. And you can see I have that payoff just uh, uh, graphed, uh, graphed directly on the plot. It's $7.19. Notice that's uh, multiples greater than the $1.69 that would have paid off under a vanilla or standard call option. Also, you'll notice I actually don't need to do the max function, right? Because this value will never be negative, right? The final stock price needs to be at least greater than or equal to the minimum price during the life of the option. Worst case, the minimum is the final. So we don't need the max function. That's sort of interesting, right? The other thing that might have occurred to you is that the frequency of observation actually matters. If you hold this floating look back call, 
you think about it, you'd prefer to measure these prices more frequently. So the greater the frequency of observation, the more valuable this floating look back call, and in fact, also the floating look back put. Well, you might look at this and say, well, wait, a floating look back call pays, in this case, $7.19 compared to only the $1.69 that I would have gotten under a vanilla. I'll just gonna always use the floating look back calls. In fact, the payoffs are um, at least as good and oftentimes much, much better. Well, of course, the price for that is the price of these options. The floating look back options are in general very expensive. So here, also dynamically on the chart, I'm showing the price of the floating look back call and floating look back put. You can see I'm using the small c and small p to denote a European scenario because we are evaluating these at maturity. And I'm pulling from the third worksheet, the worksheet in this workbook, also downloadable, where I do use the pricing formula given by Hull. So I am pricing these. It's a mod it's a sophisticated variation on the Black Scholes Merton. But you'll notice that the floating look back call, the price of this, which was determined that's the price at time zero, is $14.80. How does that compare? Well, what I'm not showing is just the price of a vanilla call option, and that would only be $8.79. So under these assumptions, which includes that 40% volatility per annum, the floating look back call happens to be almost twice as expensive. And in general, they're much more expensive. So that's the downside. Now, how about the floating look back put? Well, I'll use the same scenario here. And in comparing again to a vanilla or standard uh, put option, we know that that payoff is gonna be that fixed uh, strike price minus the final st stock price. In the case of a floating look back put, in contrast, we don't need the max function and again, we replace, what is replaced is the fixed strike price. We replace that with a favorable look back. In the case of this floating look back put, what's favorable is the maximum stock price during the life of the option. And we use that and subtract the final stock price. Again, I don't need to use the zero because this is never going to be negative by definition. And so, in this case, what is the floating look back put? What is its payoff? You can see it's right here. It's 1149. That's because we get to maturity and we have the benefit of looking back and locating to find the maximum. Looks like it's right here at 6318, right? And we subtract the final of 5169 which is $11.49. That's pretty good. How does that compare to the standard put option if it was purchased at the money? Well, our final here of $51.69 is actually above the $50. The standard put option would expire out of the money. Its path would be zero. That's a big difference. And again, what's the What's the disadvantage to this much more favorable look back scenario? Well, it's the price. The price of this floating look back put, according to my model, is $16.75 compared to the vanilla. Uh, vanilla put would be only $6.83. So more than double, almost triple the price. And I have found that, that the, the the multiples on the puts are higher than the multiples on the call, at least under the assumptions that I've run. So that's the floating look back option, which we can have a call or a put. The way that I remember these, or a key feature of these that I remember is that there is no fixed strike price in these options. The strike price is effectively replaced by the look back function. And again, they're highly path dependent. So the other variation here on the look back option is instead of a floating look back option, we could have a fixed look back option. And the fixed look back option does use a strike price. So here I have the simulator as well. I'm t I've removed the observations and a path here. This 
trial happened, this simulation happens to finish at a stock price of 38.47. And so in the case of a call option, again, if we just use as a reference, the familiar payoff for a vanilla call option, maximum of zero and the final stock price minus the strike price for a fixed look back call. The difference here is that we replace, I'm going to use max zero. We replace the final stock price with the maximum. And we still do subtract the strike price. Can this fixed look back option does contain the strike price. And you'll notice I am preserving the max function because in this case, I, in this case, it is relevant. So for the fixed look back call option, you'll notice here, we get to the end at 3847. If this were a vanilla call option, right? Our 3847 is below the $50. I've, I've in this case drawn in the fixed strike price because it's in common to the vanilla and the and the float and the fixed look back. In the case of the vanilla or standard option, this stock price, van vanilla or standard call option, this price finishes below the strike. There would be there's zero payoff on the vanilla call option. However, for the fixed look back call payoff, we get to replace the final stock price with the max. So again, we get this benefit of looking back over and let's find the maximum. And it's telling me that it's $53.02. So in this case, notice this stock price path was mostly underwater, but there was a time here where it was briefly above water at um, 53.02 and that's what we get to use. Right, so that's extremely beneficial. 5302 minus the 50 gives us the payoff of uh, $3.02. In the case of the put, right, compare the vanilla put to the maximum of zero and the fixed strike price minus the final. Well, okay, on the other hand, the fixed look back put says max zero and we're still going to use the fixed strike price, but we're going to replace the final stock price with the most favorable look back. In this case of a put, the most favorable look back is the minimum stock price during the life of it. And so in this case, it turns out that we look back, we don't have to go too far. The minimum is 3616, right? So we would be taking $50 strike minus the minimum of 3616. And we get a payoff of 1384. And that's going to be a little bit better in this case than the $11.53 we would get on the vanilla or standard put option. So that's the fixed look, book, look back as opposed to the floating look back. And in the fixed look back, we do keep the fixed strike price. So those are the two variations of the look back options. I hope this video is helpful. If it is, uh, do us a favor and subscribe to the channel so that we can do you the favor of uh, updating you uh, when we publish new videos, which is generally twice a week. Thank you.